So may I speak in the name of God, our life giver, our pain bearer, and our love maker. Amen. Amen. But as ever, the readings today seem to be remarkably appropriate for where we have reached as a community and as a congregation. Some rich sources, rich scenes to mine, especially out of this wonderful passage from the Gospel of John in chapter 17. This comes at the end of what are known as the Farewell Discourses, which is three chapters where Jesus is presented as speaking to 11 of the disciples because the 12 has gone off to do what he was going to do. He's saying goodbye. He's trying to give them the resources that they need in order to carry on the message that he wants them to carry on. And he's also praying for them. And I wonder whether this might be the prayer that, you, that, uh, that Lindy will pray today as she gives up being church warden after six years. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. Farewell prayer, although it's not farewell, but fair forward. We're working against a background of real global anxiety and real global concern. Perhaps I don't need to list them, but we all know very well that the situation in Palestine and Israel it's heartbreaking again. We all know that people are facing enormous challenges against, around COVID in India, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Brazil. We all know that we're facing enormous challenges in terms of climate change, justice around the world. How do we respond into that situation? Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And we also know that we're living in a time of huge change and that we here have been going through huge change and that we will be going through huge change in the years to come. We look back at the last year and see all of the things which have happened. We look forward. In a way, if you kind of made a checklist of all the kind of things which are challenging around change, we'd probably be able to tick the fact that you're all of them, right? having experienced fact you're all of the past year or in the year to come. The only thing that doesn't seem to be changing is that the vicar is still here. That, I assure you, will continue. I'm really interested in the relationship between constancy and change. I'm reminded of the famous phrase from the film and the book, The Leopard, for everything to stay the same, everything must change. For everything to stay the same, everything must change. And if I look back over the last year, I do think it has been extraordinary. Against a background of enormous difficulty, there has certainly been growth. There has been deepening. There has been a greater sharing. There has been discovery within and around us. I think of some of the most memorable things about last year. I'm sure you have your own memories, but. For me, the thing that perhaps comes first to mind is the um, is Holy Week last year, when we were all working out how to do things online. And particularly, I remember dawn mass, lighting the candle in the vicarage garden, and then carrying it up with Shannon holding the camera up into the house so that we could say the Eucharist together in our strange way, dispersed wherever we were. I think of the coffee mornings, which have gone amazingly well, have been incredibly supportive for many people over the past year. I think too of the picnic that we had outside after church often on a, su on, a Sunday, on a Sunday from when we reopened last year. And I thought those picnics were really lovely when we all gathered, socially distanced to eat our sandwiches. I think too of the murder mystery, which was a real highlight. Of, um, yeah, that was wonderful. We really expect a hand all of us in our drawing rooms, trying to work out who was the real expect hand. We never really discovered. I think of morning prayer. It's been wonderful over the past year. Lots of people come. It's become a real call for us. And I think of the WhatsApp group, which has been a combination of fun and craziness and seriousness. And again, has kind of enabled us to work better as a congregation. 
I think all the people who've joined us in different ways, from far off and from near. And I think too of the generosity and the ongoing support of the congregation financially, which has enabled us to continue to support others and to continue with the renovation of the land. Renewal and growth requires change, the death and resurrection paradigm. If we didn't have death, we wouldn't have life. We need them both. There is loss and there is gain. And so in the coming year, there will be extraordinary things. We'll be thinking about this a bit more in the Anno Parish meeting, but there will be growth. There will be new things. There will be losses and there will be gains. In six weeks time, we will be closing and the building will be transformed. We've got much use, much more use now to not being in this building than we were a year ago or 15 months ago. But we don't know what the future holds. I don't know what we'll be like in a year's time when we come back. I hope that we will have a gorgeously, gloriously refurbished building to be for a new home, but we will certainly be changed by the process of going and then coming back. And of course, we'll be changed individually because to change is to grow and to be perfect is to have changed often, as Cardinal Newman said. And I hope that the global situation will change as well. We're not living here in isolation. Here we are at the center of one of the key cities in the world. Here we are engaged in all sorts of ways with the challenges around injustice, around exclusion, around poverty. We speak into that as much as we try to speak into the local area because you can't separate the two of them. And I hope that we will continue to be a voice in all sorts of different ways. There will be loss and there will be gain. And above all, there will be gift. All of this is gift. We are surrounded by gift. We receive gift all the time and we try to offer it out. And in a way, it's thinking of it as gift for me, which enables us to sit more lightly to it. We don't ask for any of this. All we can do is try and do the best that we can with what we have been given. And in that context, it feels to me as though we are trying to do something special. It feels to me really important that religious communities around the world continue to be confident in what they're doing, because at their best, they're trying to say something about what it means to be human. They're trying to say something about the way in which we're not necessarily dragged down into the darkness, but we're able to be lifted up into the light. At their best, these kind of communities say something about the breadth, of the generosity, and the love which is at the heart our humanity. I'm always very conscious of this of being smug and being arrogant. But we had two conversations yesterday. Two people came here yesterday. One was a person called Chris, who runs something called Land of Lynx. Land of Lynx is trying to encourage and empower the LGBTI voice in Lambeth. He's doing great work. Yuka put us in touch with him. I want to say he was really impressed by what we're doing here and really pleased and kind of delighted and slightly surprised to find out what was going on here in terms of inclusion and the way that inclusion connected with other aspects of diversity. And then a bit later on, something called Elif Khan came and she was making a documentary, a very short film for Transition Towns Brixton about climate change and sustainability in Lambeth tied in with the Lambeth Climate Assembly, which has started quite soon. And she again was warmly delighted by what was happening here, by the way in which we're trying to live a sustainable life and trying to be a community which is sustainable. And she was taking it wider. She said, it's not just about the environment, it's about the other things which happen here. So what else are you doing? So I talked about the food bank, the roads, and all the things that we've had to stop for now, but we will start again. And she was really pleased. And then I think back to constancy, and I think we have been here since 1824, that's nearly 200 years, and in all sorts of different ways we have tried to serve the people of Waterloo and what is now the South Bank over the last 200 years. And my prayer is that there will still be people sitting here in 22, 21, and that they will be looking back to 400 years of history, 
and that we will have played our part. And this is the crucial thing about what's happening over the next year. We will have played our part in enabling this place to continue to be a place of love and generosity and hope. And so I look forward very immediately to Pentecost next Sunday, which is when Bishop Kingston is coming, Bishop Richard, and he asked to come because he wanted to come and send us his good wishes, really, um, as we move into the next stage of our life. So remember that we wear red at Pentecost. Barbara's, Barbara's anticipated that today. So get the red thing, and so is Mark. <laughs> so get the red things out of your wardrobe and come wearing red to welcome the bishop next time, next Sunday. And also immediately after this, we have the election of new members of the PCC, we have the election of women of the new church warden. Perhaps not by lot, the reading from Acts, where they were chosen by lots, but we're lucky in that we have some very lots of wonderful people who've offered to be on the church council. And I hope that we can all move forward together towards I know not where. With that prayer, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you will give me so that they may be one as we are one. And I want to finish with a quote. I'm going to give you this quote. And if anybody can tell me where it comes from, you get a special prize. <laughs> there must be a beginning of any great matter, but the continuing unto the end, until it be thoroughly finished, yields the true glory. I'm going to read that again. There must be a beginning of any great matter, but the continuing unto the end, until it be thoroughly finished, yields the true glory. Does anybody know where that comes from? Hmm? Could be, no, it's not though. No. Duncan? Well done. Mm. <laughs> but the other thing which none of you got is that you've walked past it probably a thousand times because it's in the porch of the church. It's on that stone thing, which is the other side of that wall, which is going to be moved. Unless you're short and you're here for the first time, or Ben. You've walked past it a thousand times. And I love that quote, and I think it should be our motto for the coming year. There must be a beginning of any great matter, but the continuing unto the end, and until it be thoroughly finished, it yields the true glory. And this is a nice, nice bit of continuity, because it's on the stone, which was a gift to St. John's, from the 72nd North Lambert Scout Group. In <laughs> so maybe Maureen knows something about that. <laughs> so I'm going to finish with what is known as the Great Prayer, correct, Duncan? And then we move on with the rest of our service. But before I absolutely finish, I just want to remind us too of what Doug Hammerschultz, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, said, which is this: "For all that has been, thanks. For all that shall be." Yes. And so let's pray. This is the prayer for the Festival Church. Lord God, when you call your servants to endeavour any great matter, grant us also to know that it is not the beginning, but the continuing, continuing of the same, until it be thoroughly finished, which yields true glory. <coughs> Through him who, for the finishing of your work, laid down his life for us, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.